his technical things. Um, we have to adopt the new bylaws before she can participate digitally. This is all kind of new process. So, um, because our new bylaws have the uh, policy for participating digitally, but the old bylaws didn't address that because that really just wasn't, you know, uh, happening in this manner, so to speak. So, I want Karen to understand that so that she knows. Yeah, I messaged her. Yes, I'm listening and talking to you. So, okay. Okay, good. So, we will add her and, um, you know, once we start the meeting and amend the agenda for that. Okay? All right. So, I will call the regular town council um, January 20th, 21 at 6 o'clock meeting to order. It's probably 6.04 now. We'll begin the meeting with a, um, please stand for a moment of silence, and then the uh, pledge board. to the agenda. Um, I'd like to make, propose a uh, move of the agenda from the bylaws, unfinished business A, to after approval of the agenda. And then also um, adding in our Board of Supervisor presentation by Tim Trivet under presentation, first thing under presentations. He should have been on the agenda that as a regular item. I apologize, that was. Um, so we have to do it here, but it, it will, will be on there regularly. Okay. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. All right, any discussion? Second? Yes. Aye. 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 Do you need me to vote? Aye. Aye. Not yet, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will move to um, Resolution 04 21, which is the adoption of the 2021 bylaws, rules, and procedures. Um, do I have a motion? So move. A second, I can. All right, open for discussion. <clears throat> yes. Okay, no. uh, an observation and a uh, suggestion on amendment. In uh, section 5.1.F, <clears throat> there is a provision for notice to counsel before items are added to the agenda, but there's no indication of what kind of notice is required around the time it is uh, before we add matters to the agenda as we just did. And I mentioned that purely for discussion, I think it requires some discipline on our part just to make sure we get out notice to everybody as expeditiously as we can in whatever manner we can. There is one substantive matter that I missed when I did the review and I apologize for this. If you look at section 3.5, <clears throat> which is suspending the bylaws, uh, that, that calls for a two-thirds majority to do so. Uh, the Attorney General has opined regularly 
and I'll ask counsel to step in if my memory is bad on this, that uh, it, in the absence of a statutory procedure requiring a super majority, a simple majority is all that's required for action. So I would suggest a formal number uh, that we, that instead of a vote of two thirds, that we amend that to a vote of a majority of members present. And I would, I would pose that as an amendment. Second. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All in favor of this amendment? Aye. 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 A
you you can vote if, especially if you were here. I mean, you, there's nothing that says you can't vote. When I'm on boards, I do the same thing. I have the same reservation, but there's absolutely nothing that says you cannot vote. Um, you can, you also may just if, if it's a fifth and you just your personal if you're conscious. Uh, you also may review the audio at a later time. And if if you feel as though amendments are in the work, um, council could amend the minutes, that's the purpose of adopting them tonight, or you can hold off and adopt them later. There's nothing that says you have to adopt them tonight. So either way, you could either uh, approve them tonight um, based on the representation of the, the members who work here, um, and again, confirm that at a later date, or defer until you're able to confirm prior to it, but either way is fine. I'm satisfied with going ahead to my place on the convention of the member of the board. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none. Uh, Karen, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Okay. Council member announcement. Um, Okay, we will start um, with Pal. Do you have anything? Well, just some comments. I, I don't know if that comes with our announcement or not, but um, people in the audience may not know, but Monday the council participated in a very detailed priority session. And I just want to welcome to the council and the staff for doing that. I think that will prove very productive when we choose a new manager uh, to help the manager along, I think it'll also be helpful for us working together as a group and knowing where we stand on some of those. And also with perspective, that the priority we may have is one of like 500. But, but I thought it was a very good session. I'll put that everybody on there. Okay, well, the issue of trademark has come up. I wanted to advise you that the, if you will, the marketing trademark, which is the one with Colonial Beach and the Anchor of the Wave, was in use in 2018. It was a it was registered as a trademark in 2019. However, in reviewing the trademark website, uh, our official seal, if you will, that's one with St. John's, it's not a registered trademark. Well, we can talk about that. Okay. Great. I'm nothing at this time. Okay. Karen? I have nothing. Yeah. Nothing at this time. All right. All right. As a liaison to the Planning Commission, just a quick update. Um, they are going to hold a work session tomorrow via Zoom, um, the 21st at 3 p.m. The topics for discussion will be the uh, applicants for the planning commission. We have six applicants for two seats to fill. Uh, the comprehensive plan update. Um, Vicki Roman and Kathleen both spoke with John Bateman with the Northern Neck Planning uh, Commission. And shall share details of that discussion. And the, the main pieces they brought forward are a comprehensive coastal resource management plan. Uh, as of 2013, the state said we need to at least address a comprehensive plan. There's also some comments from RAP that need to be incorporated a little bit tighter and references, references to the hazard mitigation plan and the Northern Net Economic Development Initiatives. The hazard plan has to do with FEMA and ensuring that we, if we were to apply for FEMA, FEMA grants, we need to have some reference to the comprehensive plan. So again, the Planning Commission will be coming together to figure out how to get that language in there and get in there tight uh, before it would go to a uh, public hearing. So, there's that, and then they're working on a text amendment for the commercial residential zoning district. Uh, consider changing the minimum lot size. This is uh, in regards to the Dodson development uh, for the townhomes. Current lot size is 5,000 square feet, uh, but the townhomes are a bit smaller than that. So it's just a text amendment will be done on that. And right now, the Planning Commission is planning on holding a public hearing on the 28th of January at 530 at the town center. And the primary purpose of that will be one uh, for the um, text change to the, uh, the uh, zoning district, as well as if we get the uh, comprehensive plan put together in, in 
in such shape it would be appropriate to have for the public hearing, that's when we will do that as well. Okay, that's in after the Zoom Committee. Have a little bit ambitious. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that we're <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow's meeting will give us a good wait to, to see if it's feasible to have it together for a public hearing. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Um, I would uh, also just echo Sarah's um, comments about the priority convene on Monday. It was a long day, I think it was seven and a half hours long, and there are seemingly 500 <laughs> items. Um, and I'm sure more will come up, um, but it puts it in perspective all of the many practices now and all of the things that. Um, are going on and that you know needs to be followed. So it was very productive and very good. All right. Uh, next up, I'll call up our uh, board of supervisors and chairman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Congratulations. I we'll look forward to working with you as well as the new council members. Um, I think we're well on our way already to building a, a better relationship with the county. Um, as you know, you attended the supervisor's meeting. Uh, you've attended several of them in the last couple months. And uh, and I think it's mutual that the county wants to come together with the town and see what we can do to make things better. Uh, as you said recently about people down in that end of the county need to realize what a jewel the town is going to be to. You know, to the county, and I don't think they recognize that. But, um, but we're going to work on that this year and uh, and make it better. Uh, the main thing I want to tell you is that the the health department down in West Mullen has been overwhelmed, as you can imagine, with calls. Uh, their system is crashed. If you try to go online and do anything, you're not going to get to them. You're not going to get them on the phone. Uh, the county administrator today said that you know they're fielding most of the calls in his office now, uh, but they're trying to very quickly get an 800 number in place that citizens will be able to call. And then they're gonna do a spreadsheet, you know, and this is all related to COVID and getting the shots. So uh, uh, the, the, the Northern Neck only has a thousand and there's 150,000 in the whole region that we're in, 12 counties. So there's a lot of logistics issues there that they're trying to resolve. So if you try to call the county, hopefully you'll look on the website. It'll be on the county website as well as the, um, the health department website to, to try to reach somebody. But even as many people that are frustrated right now, uh, I know we're all, y'all may be getting calls as well as I am and, and all the county officials. Uh, hopefully they'll just have some patience because we don't have the answer. Um, the county administrator is trying to reach out to the governor's office to try to see, you know, what we can put out to the public. But right now, what's happening isn't working. So I just want to make you aware of that. Um, I was uh, able to participate in a, in, a, um, in a survey this week about uh, economic development for our county for the Northern Neck. Um, uh, the guy that, that, that's doing it and putting it all together, um, he told me he's from the Bay Area and I, I talked to him for probably 30 minutes. And we talked about the Northern Neck and what some of the hindrances are to bring industry here. And, and, and then I realized, you know, I, I thought he meant he was from the Bay Area, but he was actually from the Bay Area of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> He's never been to the Northern Neck. So uh, I, I thought he might be really <laughs> stupid. But, you know, just the way he talked, I assumed he was from the Northern Neck because he'd done some research about it. But they are compiling that. They're going to interview probably 100 people, uh, I think is their goal. Uh, to get a lot of different perspectives, and they're going to compile all that report together and present it to the county uh, and the Northern Neck um, Economic Development um, Committee that's, that's going to be put in place. Um, any questions for me about anything? Uh, I was unable to attend the, the board meeting. That's the first one I've missed. Since being elected, I was like uh, Ms. Sullivan, I was able to attend uh, through virtual. Um, but you know, I, I didn't want to miss, but I had no choice. So I'm here tonight, though. If you have any questions or anything, hopefully all of you have my cell numbers. Um, 
I'm available anytime that I can help you. We're going to try to set up some meetings here in the next few weeks, uh, next month or so, uh, for council members um, to try to meet with county representatives uh, once we get a new uh, uh, town manager on board. Hopefully, all these things will transition to where it's going to be a positive thing for the county and the town. Anybody have any questions for me? <laughs> I just want to let the council know that um, I was at the meeting when uh, Mr. Trivet was virtually at the meeting. I was there in person and uh, was very well received. And um, they've extended an invitation to uh, meet with me quarterly. And would also, I kind of <clears throat> introduced you, uh, my K Ray, and uh, suggested that I bring you down there at some point. Um, to meet them as well as our vice mayor. And um, I, it just was a very good, very well received meeting. And um, I'm glad you're healthy and feeling good. Thank you. Um, and I'm glad you attended even through the phone, even though that was, they had their own technical difficulties. I feel like we're doing pretty good actually. You're actually ahead of that. Uh, and we just <laughs> paid $68,000 for a new system. So uh, yeah. for the county. So and at least we can see her. Right. <laughs> and they did bring up um, the economic development. I brought up also the town's role in economic development for the region and uh, how much we have going on here. And I'm looking forward to the Chamber of Commerce presentation tonight because um, I would like to see Colonial Beach, the words Colonial Beach, a little bit more prevalent in the uh, regional and uh, in the county plans for economic development. So, and everything was very receptive and, and very good. So. I mean, also, uh, Madam Mayor, I, I don't know if, if anybody's going to mention it tonight, but if there's anything to say about that water tower, there's a lot of people asking questions about that as far as the pain. I mean, it's pretty obvious where it's at, but maybe somebody can make a comment if you know any more than what's out there in the public, because there are a lot of people wondering what, what's going on with that. So, I'm sure, Rob, do you have an update on where they're at? Yeah, the final coat of white has been put on, um, that, and that is the finished color of, of the water tower. Um, the town logo is going on approximately in two weeks, but your major painting and all the mechanical uh, repairs that were made uh, are complete. All right, so in a couple of weeks, we'll be All right, any other questions for me? Thank you. All right. Next up, we have a proclamation for honoring Mr. Um, Sal. Is he here tonight? <coughs> no, I didn't know that he, if he would come out. Um, <clears throat> Sal lives right down the street from me, so this is a little bit. Um, personal in the sense that uh, he really is somebody truly to recognize. Um, I'm going to read the proclamation and I hope it does him justice because he's uh, been a huge service to this community for a long time. Whereas Salvatore Sal Puglisi, a resident of the town of Colonia Beach for 20 years, will celebrate his 90th birthday on January 31st, 2021. And whereas Mr. Puglisi is a veteran of the United States Air Force, and whereas he has been a member of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla 310, based in Calio, Virginia, since 2010 as a vessel examiner, and whereas within five years, a total number of 870 vessel safety checks amongst Colonial Beach have been completed by Sal and his base vessel safety check buggy, if you know the buggy is unique. Whereas in the last year, um, Sal has performed 170 vessel safety checks, the most amongst all flotillas in his division. And whereas along with a total of 203 recreational boating safety program visits to marinas, boat dealers, and more. And whereas during this year, he has expended an astounding 673 hours performing Coast Guard auxiliary activities. And whereas while sharing his wisdom and community spirit here in Colonial Beach, Sal has gained the admiration and respect from all walks of life throughout the community. And now, therefore, be it resolved on behalf of the town of Colonial Beach 
on the 20th day of January 2021, we commend and congratulate Mr. Salvatore Sal Poglisi on achieving this milestone in his life and further wish him all the best with years of health and happiness. 90 years old, and then he's doing all that. So we have a plaque for him and um, a card that we will uh, pass around and sign. Uh, I will make sure to bring it by his house personally. Um, I also uh, would like to mention that it is uh, Ebby, Miss Evie Winston, who will be celebrating her 101st birthday. Which she got firewood for a hundred from the town of the beach. And so we are also celebrating her birthday and sending her a card. Um, we appreciate her and her artistic, creative abilities and talents in the town. Next is recognition for Ms. Davis. Um, I've worked a lot with Teresa also, so this is really, I'm very proud to um, present this to her. We've got a nice um, memento here, and it says, recognizing Teresa Davis on your retirement after 15 years with the town of Colonial Beach. You have been an outstanding team member and extraordinary friend. Best wishes on your upcoming adventure. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate <laughs> all of the things that you have done <laughs> and all of your hard work and dedication to the town. <coughs> Teresa is the code enforcer. <laughs> okay, that is not an easy job, and we really appreciate it. I personally. I've appreciated working with you. Appreciate it. We're going to miss you. So that made a difference. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Can we all stand up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get a quick video. Thank you. Right now. Sorry, Rick. Okay. Come on. Okay. I'm trying to figure out one smile. Don't be a stranger, okay? Oh, I won't. Okay, good. Thank you. Don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger. Okay. And I lost my paper. Next up is 25 years of service um, for Curtis Coleman. And I bet he's not here. I know. He lives far away. Um, our town residents probably don't know Curtis, but uh, he is a very friendly, um, very helpful uh, member of our wastewater treatment plant. He's actually the, the supervisor of the wastewater treatment plant and does an extremely important job for our town. One of those people you don't see out in the public, but without him, what would we do? And so um, anyway, 25 years of service is, is just outstanding. And I'm glad he's continuing working with us and continues to make that commute because he drives quite a, quite a long ways into work uh, every day. Um, oh, and they wrote me up something. On November 28th, I'll say what they wrote too. On November 28th, or November 8th, 2020, Mr. Coleman celebrated his 25th year of serving the town of Plenty Beach. Mr. Coleman has excelled during what during that time to become the supervisor at the wastewater treatment plant, we thank Mr. Coleman for his continued dedication to our town. And we would have uh, recognized this at our December meeting, but we didn't have a December meeting. So that's why it's in January. Okay, next up is Mr. Sal Poglisi. Is Bill here? I haven't yeah. seen him. He was told some time back 
but uh, apparently he forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I would also, I would take this personally to his home too. So these are all really Definitely. important people. Um, uh, Bill retired. If you don't know Bill, um, you probably did know him. You didn't know you knew him because he was our trash truck guy. Uh, nicknamed Wild Bill for people that know him by that name. And uh, William Bill Childers, um, this is to certify that William Bill Childers has officially retired on December 31st, 2020, after having served the public for 17 years. It is with our sincere appreciation for your outstanding public service to the town of Plenty Beach that we thank you. We wish you well in your retirement and the best of luck for years to come. And Bill has served this community also in our athletics at the school. He's been Petey the Pirate. Um, he's just a dedicated member, and I think he's a drifter himself. Right? He graduated from, from Lincoln High School. So just a, a really special person. And did an interview on WWER 88.1. I'm going to give a little shout out to our radio station. He did an interview, and if you can, you can catch it on their website, worth listening to. He is quite a character and has traveled and done a lot of really cool things, which you may not know if you didn't hear it interview. Well, thank you. Thank you to Bill. Next up is presentation from uh, Susan French Janais. Blackjack. Susan, I see her on the screen. There we go. Hear me? There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying to figure out how you can see. Can you see my screen? You have to present. No. Oh. Did you see it when I had it up? No. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Susan, do you want me to do it? There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh. How's that? Yep. There we go. You're good. Okay, perfect. Uh, so first of all, I want to say hello to the new council members. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Susan French Janice, and I own Flag Shack. We've been working with the town um, for three years now. We created the Visit CBVA uh, official tourism entity. Uh, the branding, the logo, the, the colors, the website, all of that. And um, just want to say we look forward to getting to knowing you, get to knowing you and, and working with you in the future. So first I want to start off by just sharing some analytics from 2020. You can see that our website visits were 138,000, which was almost 40 over 20, over 40,000 more than 2019 and uh, about 100,000 more than 2018. So we're, we're growing exponentially the number of people who are viewing the website, finding it, the number of visitors that coming, all the statistics are up. So we're super excited about that. Um, and we get the most referrals from, um, we, we, we invest in um, search engine optimization and that's where we get the most of our referrals. We also get um, a lot from social media. We have, Facebook account, Twitter account, um, Instagram account, Pinterest, Yelp. We have just about all of them, Google search. And um, we get, uh, again, sorry, search engine, social media, the town website. We actually get a lot of referrals from there. And then also from media and influencers. Any questions about this page before I move on? Um, so 2020 was a rough year um, because of COVID, or it should have been actually. Um, travel just got upended. And, you know, my husband's a Marine. And the one thing he taught me was to improvise, adapt and overcome. So we came up with an entirely new strategy. Um, our primary target audience had always been visitors. That was our, our focus. When COVID hit, it became very clear that travel was going to be different and it was going to have, have a major impact on all tourism destinations. 
So we made a conscious decision to shift to supporting the local businesses. We um, created several blog posts that just kind of let people know that we were open. Um, we let businesses know. I mean, we, we listed what businesses were open. We tried to um, let them know what the, what the rules were for COVID from, from the state of health. And then when, it's, when, when it started to be clear that things were going to be closed for a while, air traffic was clearly going to be shutting down. So that meant that people were going to be taking more driving vacations. Now we saw this as an opportunity for Colonial Beach because we were primarily a drive vacation. We weren't relying on people flying in. So rather than focus on the overall experience of coming to Colonial Beach, we, we decided to do a, like a micro focus on the businesses. How we did that was first of all, we, we were more aggressive with applying for grants and we secured, one of the grants we secured was the Wanderlove grant issued by Virginia Tourism Corporation, which is the Commonwealth's uh, tourism division. So we got the Wanderlove grant and one of the aspects of the Wanderlove grant was actually something that we already had on our agenda, which was to create um, itineraries. So it kind of, everything just fell into place perfectly for us because we were already planning on doing this. We had already started on doing it. And now we had some, some backing from VTC to help us execute it. So we created a series of different road trips. They're topical road trips. Uh, they focused on maybe Virginia wine, um, craft beer, art. We did a holiday road trip. We talked about the rivers and oysters. And just showing you that map with each itinerary, we did a map. Uh, some of them started from Northern Virginia or Washington, D.C., and they just kind of looped around. Some went down the Northern Neck. This one was the longest one. It was, I think, uh, over 500 miles. But we did short ones, long ones, anywhere from 200 to 500 miles. And you can see from the numbers below there what that chart is. That shows you um, how many visitors we had to the website per month. So during the summer months, we had more visitors to the website than we'd ever had before. And that was when we started these itineraries. So we think that helped a lot. In addition, we also created um, with Maggie in Town Hall, she created videos to help support it. We did social media posts to support it. And we also did media outreach. Um, the media, I'll show you that. The media outreach was not about necessarily traveling at the moment but everybody, including the state, was talking about when travel resumed. But what we focused on was we had always been primarily trying to get people here for a day trip or a weekend trip. And then again, our part of our strategy for our second year was to um, work on extended stays. Now this tied in also well with COVID because people were looking to get out of the cities, out of Washington, DC, and spend longer time at, at places in rural areas or country areas or houses. So we, we were able to capitalize on that as well. Um, we also, again, changed our geography. The Washington DC and Richmond were always our two primary target uh, market, marketplaces. And when we did these road trips, you could see from that previous slide that we expanded it to places like Southwestern Virginia, Central Virginia, um, even into Pennsylvania and Maryland. We also um, did partnerships. So like for instance, the mayor of Danville or the vice mayor of Danville had visited Colonial Beach and posted on his Instagram uh, a photo of him at Dockside. This was pre-COVID. So we reached out to him, for example, found out that Danville has a really large uh, craft beer festival. So when we did the craft beer Wanderlove road trip, we partnered with Danville to um, include them on our itinerary. And they in turn shared, the mayor specifically, or the vice mayor specifically, shared our blog um, post on that with people in their area. And you could see we did get some really good media hits. Um, in 2020, Thrillist was an exciting one. Um, AARP was an exciting one. Um, the family traveler one there on the left, that's uh, a very large Instagram account. 
we were able to get um, that photo, that first photo of the baby that was taken at Colonial Beach. So they had, we had posted that photo and they had shared, shared it. So that was really exciting for us. The one thing we did not do in 2020 was aggressively promote events. And the reason for that was number one, we were conscious that residents in town were very concerned about um, events being held. And also there were, you know, Virginia Health had um, very strict guidelines and, and we didn't want to overpromise and underdeliver because what was happening, a lot of people were promoting events and then they ended up getting canceled. So that's the one thing that we did not actively pursue at that time. Um, this is a slide I just wanted to share quickly. We have used this slide from the beginning. It was in our very first presentation um, when we came to Colonial Beach. And what it represented was we had talked about the very first thing we wanted to do here was generate awareness for the town. We feel we did that. Um, and that shows over the past three years, the number of people that have found us, the number of media that have written about us. Um, the brand promotion was the creation of the logo. It was uh, the establishment of the social media accounts. And it was just constantly promoting that brand, being consistent in what it was we had to offer. And we had shared at our first meeting that our ultimate goal was to maintain momentum, but also get investors. And so we were very excited when, when these development projects started coming into fruition. Um, we had talked about you know, in order to develop um, have or have a tourism destination, you had to have a lot of things fall into place first. And we're very excited to have been a part of that over the last few years and in, in seeing that happen. And especially these big development projects that are now coming in. Finally, uh, with next steps. So we have the grants that we've secured. We've also secured a marketing initiative grant. Um, those two are being executed simultaneously. Each has different deliverables. Each has different requirements. Um, but I believe both of them go through June 30th. So we're going to continue with doing itineraries. Um, we are refreshing our website. It's not going to look drastically different, but there are some operational things and make it a little bit more user-friendly. Um, we're continuing to work on co-marketing opportunities, and that's because travel normal travel is not expected to resume before fall, if then. So we're going to continue on working on itineraries and finding um, people and places to partner with to generate awareness outside of our primary target audiences. And we have been working with Dodson and Sunset Cove to help promote their projects. Um, we've worked on, we, we co-drafted uh, the press release for Dodson, we wrote the press release for Sunset Cove, we've done some media outreach for both of them, and those uh, are the things that we plan on continuing to do at least until we get to summer, and at summer we'll, we plan to reevaluate and see where we are, especially in terms of COVID, and how and what we want to promote. And that is all. Does anyone have any questions? Anybody have any questions for David? Um, I wanted to let you know that if in planning one of those itinerary routes recently, um, the town of Montrose and the town of Warsaw have reached out to me. I know the uh, Warsaw is interested in promoting their farmer's market, and we have a farmer's market on Thursdays. So um, anyway, I just thought I might pass that little tidbit along. and. Um, I know there aren't a lot of events happening right now, so Montrose didn't have any ideas on what to promote, but they would like to do a collaborative um, project together. So to pass that tidbit along. Okay, that's great. Um, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but particularly on social media, well, everywhere really, social media, blog post, website, um, we have been um, co-marketing a lot with Chesapeake Bay Wine Trail. Um, specifically Ingleside, because it's right here. Um, we've also been doing some work with um, the town of Irvington, um, kind of co-marketing things with them. So we're going to continue doing that as well. And, and you know, yes, if there are other towns um, that you know specifically want to partner with us, we, we'd be happy to. We feel that, you know, we're, we're part of a, um, oh, in fact, we had a call with King George, um, King George County last week. So there may be some opportunities there. 
Um, we've been talking with Stratford Hall and just, you know, a whole bunch of different places. So we just feel it's kind of um, all of our responsibility at this unprecedented time to be promoting regional things um, because it helps all of us. So anybody else, please feel free to send our way that you want us to talk to, we'd be happy to. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad it worked out to present digitally. And uh, send us a copy of your presentation. Oh, you have no link. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Karen, did you have any questions? I don't, I don't want to leave you out because you're online. No, okay, you feel good. Okay. Up next, Mike Fitzpatrick with the Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Committee. So I think we have a copy of the slide. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor and, and members of council. It's a pleasure to be here this evening and I look forward to sharing my thoughts with you on um, what the Economic Development Committee is and, and what our goals and, and plans are going forward. So just a little bit of a brief history here. In um, early December, I was approached by the Chamber of Commerce to fill a position that was open on the board of directors. I accepted that. And they asked me um, to consider establishing and chairing an economic development committee to kind of broaden some of the things that the Chamber of Commerce is involved with to move beyond just activities and events here in town. And I gladly accepted that challenge and immediately jumped into this. So um, I formed the Economic Development Committee the first week in December and began my recruiting activities. Um, go to the next slide. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tonight is, is who those members are that, are that I have recruited, the mission statement, the priorities that we've been working on, and then some of the next steps that we have coming up. Next slide, please. So in terms of the members for the EDC, what I had in mind was, first of all, um, attracting and bringing onto the team experienced business executives that have reached beyond just Colonial Beach. So people that have connections um, and networks that are outside of just the immediate beach here in the Richmond area, Northern Virginia, over in Maryland and, and beyond. Also, people that have a strong vested interest in the success of our town, so either a history here or, or have um, are currently residents here or business owners here. And I'll, I'll tell you who these folks are in just a moment. And also trying to get people that represent multiple business disciplines. So bringing some breadth here with people that have um, experience more in the medical field, people that have experience in property management and development field, so in wealth management. So you'll, you'll see it's a cross section of people that have many talents. And then finally, people that are willing and able to devote the time and energy that's needed to really do an effective job on this committee. So, next step, our next one, please. So, this, this is where we are right now. So, um, I honestly had an, an incredible um, receptive reaction to the people that I've reached out to. I, I probably approached about 15 people, and this is the group that, that after uh, interviewing and discussions with them, um, our, our initial uh, economic development committee team. I, I will just very briefly touch on these. Joe Kelly is a um, part time resident uh, here in town, mostly here, almost full time now. He's a CPA, and as you can see, was a former CEO and president of Royco. Um, this is a commercial real estate development group, and he is now um, a primary consultant for them and has his hands in quite a number of other things. Really well connected guy, especially up in the Northern Virginia area. Kathy Bachman is a bit of a fixture here in town. She's a half time resident. She's here uh, six months of the year and down in Boca Raton the other six months of the year. Um, Kathy brings a lot of experience as a government contractor. She's got a lot of connections there, particularly in the hospitality industry, where she worked for Choice Hotels and was an executive for Marriott International. So as we move forward with some of our plans and whatnot for a hotel here in town and, and other things related to hospitality, Kathy brings a, a, a really solid um, experience to the team. 
Kelly Vaughn is someone you may know. She's an owner here in town of the Riverview Inn. She also is an executive assistant for an organization called Building People and was had quite a bit of experience with the Innova Business Development Group. So she, again, has a lot of connections outside of the beach as well as a strong interest here in town. Suri Saraf is the owner of the Riverboat 7-Eleven, the Suds Car Wash, and also he has multiple businesses that he owns uh, in Maryland as well. So he's quite an entrepreneur with, with the gambling that's about to um, be approved and come into Riverboat. He's got big plans for expansion. I think it's going to be an integral part of some of the development that's going on with the Dotson Group down on the boardwalk. Doug Cooper may be a name that you're familiar with. His family is a longtime family here in Colonial Beach. The Cooper Library right next door is named after them. The BFW Cooper Building is named after them. Um, Doug is a, a wealth management executive who runs the uh, Raymond James office in Fredericksburg. He has extensive network connections with high network individuals, people that were instrumental in building out. Um, Central Park up in Fredericksburg and beyond that. So um, he's got a great history here and, uh, and a real commitment to the beach. Duke Dotson, who you all, I, I, I know, know, um, part of the Dotson Property Management Group and obviously one of our key developers here in town has been also very involved in this committee, participating in the meetings and is really excited about working with us. And then myself um, with my um, commercial business uh, executive experience and in a 20 year business area here in town. So that's our initial group. I think it's a great um, team of people here that bring a lot of, lot of strength um, and a real strong bench. So next up, um, our, our first meeting, we actually got uh, in before Christmas on December the 19th. Um, we worked at that meeting on developing our mission statement and, uh, and understanding where the strengths of the team were, who their networks were, and what we should focus on as, as our key goals. So. We came up with this as a mission statement. Um, if it's okay, I'll go ahead and read it for maybe those online that aren't watching this or whatever. The Town of Colonial Beach Economic Development Committee works proactively and collaboratively to grow the business base of Colonial Beach. The EDC promotes, encourages, and facilitates the development of responsible and properly planned residential and commercial growth. The goal of this growth is to strengthen the local economy and diversify the town's tax base in order to give residents more opportunities to live, work, and thrive in an economically focused and financially stable town. So this is somewhat aspirational, but I think with everything going on, we're at a critical crossroads here in town right now. And if we, if we all kind of agree that we want this to be a very viable and economically stable and successful town, I think this is aligned, hopefully a lot with the, the comprehensive plan um, that, that we can put in place here. Next uh, slide, please. So the mission statement, I, I don't necessarily need to read every single one of these, but these support that, that mission statement. These are the individual action items. And the thing that I'd like to mention particularly in here is we've heard a lot about economic development tonight. Many people have touched on it. And I think the key here is collaboration, that we're all working together and cohesively with a very um, similar message or same message that we're going out to people. We may all be talking to some of the same people out there. And I think it's important that the tourism group, the, the council, um, people that are um, beyond just the chamber here and, and part of this group, but the downtown Colonial Beach initiatives, the planning commission, and you can see the list up there. It's very important that I think we're all aligned and all working together. So I'm working to pull together a, a joint meeting uh, with representatives from each of these functions right now so that we can all align ourselves and not be duplicating efforts, but working together to hopefully accelerate the activities that are going to help the town be successful with our development activities. So, um, I, you know, you, you, can, you have a copy of this and you can, you know, see all the other things. What I don't want, what I want to make sure you know is we're not trying to overstep our bounds or to take things away from what other groups should be doing. But I see us as a conduit of people with high business acumen that can work very effectively and hopefully be ambassadors for the town here and the economic activities that development activities that we're all trying to pursue and then um, finally the next slide the initial focus is really tapping into the talent and connections that we've got with the committee members 
And this is already happening. People like Joe Kelly and County Boston and others have already begun their outreach to people within their networks and, and getting them interested in things that are starting to happen here in Colonial Beach. Um, we also really want to help recruit new businesses into Colonial Beach to complement the development activities. So we talked with Duke Dodson. Um, he has retained the Thalheimer um, group, you know, uh, that I'm sure you see that, that I mean, Thalheimer uh, name on many, many signs. They're going to go up here in the beach um, if they haven't already, but they are going to be the ones in charge of leasing the properties down there. So I think it's important, again, that this committee helps them find people that, that we can attract in here to build these, these new um, buildings that are going to be put up. We, as I said, we want to coordinate with all these activities and identify target for um, you know new businesses that are needed. In particular, I think that the medical um, facility here in, in town is lacking. We, we know that that's something we should we should work on. We've heard a lot about entertainment, hospitality, and food and beverage. You know, increasing our restaurants and, and things like that. So I think those are all things with the connections of the networks that we've got that we can help work on. Um, also, the chamber um, is, is committed to helping provide education and support for new businesses. So what we want to do is try to help businesses that start out, make sure that they don't go under in their first year or two years, that we put training and resources in place to help them. And some of this is, is going to, you know, just being a business friendly town. And there's things that we can do. Kathy Bachman in particular is working on helping get us reinstated as a hub zone or an opportunity zone by, by the government. And we lost that that status several years back, um, but we have an opportunity to regain it. And if we can get ourselves that hub zone designation, there's a lot of opportunities that we can do partner with the county and also with the even with King George County and Dogrin for expanding our capabilities here in town. We've got a People that are focused on doing that, and, and I'm happy to share more detail with, with you in a, in a different forum about that. So, in the, in the short uh, five weeks that we've uh, been established, I think we've accomplished a fair amount, and I just wanted to give you an idea of where we are, where we're headed, and assure you that we want to work uh, collaboratively and cooperatively with all the other um, organizations in town, and particularly with the council. So, thank you for the opportunity tonight to present. Any questions? Yeah. You mentioned the riverboat. Where do we stand on gambling? Is that what's the well? It, they're they're beholden to the government in Maryland. So um, Maryland has um, certainly indicated and voted that they're moving forward with um, enabling sports gambling and slot machines. And I think that's what we probably are you know are expecting to happen at at the riverboat here. Um, once the Maryland General Assembly convenes, and there's some things that have to move forward to finalize all that, but my understanding from Surrey is that's all in the works and, and moving forward. No, that doesn't matter. Yeah. But yes, yeah. um, the Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development came up a lot in our priorities meeting, and uh, I know you and um, it Joe, was Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly, mm -hmm. yeah, we're on that. And so I really appreciate your participation and, and um, you know, staying connected with us on all those things because I think there's a lot of things that I am so excited to have an economic development um, committee to pass to, to work with because it's too much for the town to take mm -hmm. on everything. And so this is a great group of people. I know all of them. And um, I know their value is really uh, high to what they have to offer. And so I'm excited about that. I mean, we've talked about everything from how to support some existing properties and business owners in uh, services they need classes or um, training employees, program awareness, what programs are out there already that they don't know to be aware of and how to apply for them and things like that. And uh, and just a lot of things I think are going to align and be very helpful. So I'm looking forward to meeting with the whole group in February or, you know, mm -hmm. when we schedule that. Great. Well, thank you. We, we are too. And we're here to help you, to support you, and, and be that pressure relief valve for, you know, being spread too thin with the council. So, okay. Excellent. Great. Thank you all. I think Karen has a question. Oh, Karen has a question. Oh, sorry, Karen. Go ahead. <laughs> 
not it's not a question um i'm staying muted on the video because you're hearing me over my phone um i just wanted to commend you on that presentation and tell you how excited i am to see it and particularly excited to see that the chamber is reaching out to the other organizations in town that are interested in economic development i think as we do our search for a new town manager having a simple version of what this group is doing is going to help us look really good to to, pro, to good prospects. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. I'm excited about it. So, all right. Well, thank you all. Thank you. February is going to be a great month. We'll terminate by Okay. Next up is citizen input. Um, first up is Walter. And Walter, I very much adore you, but I do stick to the three minutes. So I will uh, let you go. I have three subjects I want to speak on. First of all, I want to thank the ladies that did the town hill. It wasn't for the ladies in this town. Uh, nothing would be done in this town. The other thing, uh, I want to thank the Payton of the water tower, the guys that did the water tower. They did a fantastic job. It, uh, it, I know it's not been completed yet. And uh, the other thing, I'm going to give a free history lesson. The governor of Virginia spoke but 35 years ago at the commencement address of the high school, it was Chuck Rob. And he went down on when the operation on the the West Padilla slide he went down on the water slide when it was an operation. That's my history lesson for the town. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> Eric Nelson. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor, um, Council. I'm uh, Eric Nelson. I'm at 1321 Lossing Avenue, but I'm here tonight speaking on behalf of the Kamoni Beach Community Foundation. Uh, first of all, I think I think Heather distributed uh, these uh, uh, flyers that we produced. This is actually our was our 15 year anniversary newsletter. And I just wanted to draw your attention to it so you can um, take a look at all the things that the foundation has accomplished over the last 15 years. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate all of those who won the elections um, on behalf of the, the board of directors of the foundation and also to uh, Mr. Duggan for being appointed to uh, fill uh, mayor's slot when she vacated it. So anyway, congratulations. The foundation is really looking forward to working with uh, with the council this year. Um, I listened with intent interest for the seven and a half hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, this is, uh, uh, I guess, the third time that I've listened to that um, conversation. And honestly, as tedious and, and uh, time consuming as it was, it was really fascinating. And particularly from the perspective of the foundation, because the foundation just the day before went through a retreat where we identified our own priorities. And not surprisingly, probably there was some overlap between the priorities that the foundation uh, it wants to pursue and the, and the priorities that the council wants to pursue. In particular, the three that um, 
that the foundation board uh, identified that we'd like to work with the, the um, council with or the town. Uh, one of them is um, town-wide Wi-Fi. We would like to establish Wi-Fi throughout the town that can be used by residents and tourists alike. Uh, I know that was uh, not exactly touched on in the conversation that you guys had, but it was sort of tangentially related to some of the high, uh, broadband uh, conversation that you had. So I'd like to uh, begin to have a conversation with the, the foundation. would like to have, begin to have a conversation with the appropriate people about how to start making that happen. Another thing which you mentioned at the, uh, that the council mentioned at the planning session was um, a, a new community center. And that is one of the priorities that the, that the foundation identified. We would like to begin the process of transitioning from the existing community center to a new community center. Uh, we recognize all of the uh, deficiencies of the current community center, including the fact that the location is not ideal for, uh, for the use of the students and others who might be interested in using it. And also the, the specific um, activities that can go on in it is more limited than probably a, community, a real community center should be. So we would like to begin to have a conversation again with the appropriate person or persons um, in town council or town staff on moving towards the transition of a new community center. We recognize that it's gonna take some period of time, but we, we want to begin that conversation. The third area, which um, has been mentioned a couple of times, um, including by Mr. Mr. Fitzpatrick, is related to uh, medical uh, support of the town. There's uh, an organization called RAM. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. It stands for Remote Area Medical Clinic. And RAM um, sets up clinics, mobile clinics in different locations. And for some period of time, like three or four days, uh, allows any of the town residents to come forward and to have any of the kind of medical uh, treatment that they need to have that can be done in that facility, which includes both uh, dental and other kinds of medical um, services. So we had planned to do this um, for this year, but the planning would have taken place last year, which of course everything kind of came to a grinding halt because of COVID. So, uh, so we do plan to do that. We'd like to bring RAM to Colonial Beach. Again, this is a temporary medical facility that is set up, but it can lead into other medical uh, initiatives in this town. So. Uh, so those are the three things that the foundation is focused on that we would like to very much begin a conversation with the appropriate people um, to start working on it. So uh, that's all I really had to say. And I guess I, this is the first time I've ever haven't been um, dinged for Ding. speaking I think you just got dinged. <laughs> I didn't get dinged, I think okay. just did. <laughs> it just happened. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions? <laughs> All right, so I, I look forward to hearing from whoever the appropriate people are so we can get moving. Thank you. We'll have some follow up. Also, will you pass on the hub zone that Fitzpatrick mentioned um, that Kathy's working on and the initiatives from the foundation to the planning commission as you talk about the content? We're going to make sure things like that that are big. All right, that's all I had signed up for citizen input. Is there anybody else? There was one that was written, I believe, and oh, sent okay. in for Heather to read. Joyce Reimer. Do you want to read it, Karen? Or since you're virtual, I'll read it. I, I was going to have Heather read it, but it doesn't matter. You can read it. All right, Heather, we're going to read it. I'm going to pull this down. Yeah. Than last time I was like struggling. Okay. Okay, Joyce Reimer wrote in um, one, she please contribute to a survey downtown Colonial Beach will be circulating shortly to help downtown Colonial Beach produce a DHCD funded marketing brochure to attract downtown retail. Information will feed into the larger COC initiative and 
downtown Colonial Beach will participate with and seek input from that committee. But we are in a time crunch to complete this project to meet grant requirements. Two, to help those planning or considering to restore historic properties, we are organizing a Zoom workshop for late February on how to access historic tax credits and avoid having projects disqualified. It will include examples by development firms on how they dealt with and overcame difficulties. Historic surveying is to be extended to the point and possibly other neighborhoods later this year. So the workshop could be relevant to many more residents, businesses, and investors. Number three, the Osprey Festival will be virtual again, but with a do-it-yourself twist to advance down to Colonial Beach's goals of bringing in tourists during the off seasons. Towards that end, downtown Colonial Beach is currently identifying nest locations for a map and possible repairs plus volunteer Osprey watchers. And then she also sent in one last thing. Um, there is a free year-long community vitality training series conducted by Virginia Main Street once a month. See the Virginia Main Street website next door or the downtown Colonial Beach Facebook site for further information. And that is all for Ms. Reimer. Thank you. All right, with that, I'll close the public invite. Thank you for reminding me. I, mean, I forget when they come in the paper form sometimes, like the write them down on the list. All right, next <laughs> up is moving on to unfinished business. Uh, since we adopted the bylaws already, the next topic was discussion for the liaison assignment, and I just wanted to um, uh, appoint Mr. Duggan to finance so that I was no longer two liaisons and um, that he would take over that part of that liaison position. Okay. All right, you accept. Excellent. He said thank you. He said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, next up is resolution 06-21 to amend the school fund. We talked about this at the work session. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve this. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing none. Uh, Karen? Aye. Um, Mr. I. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Any further discussion? No? Okay, I'll start with that one this time. Aye. 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 Karen? Aye. And Chair Bozak? Aye. Excellent. Okay. Berkeley group. We can come on in. <laughs> Thank you for being so patient and sitting through some of our meetings. Hopefully, it was also informative to some of the ongoing for Plenty Beach and exciting things we have coming our way. And now I gotta find my video. Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, members of council, both. Is your mic on? Is it on? Oh, okay. All right. And talk nice and loud because we have several people that watch on Facebook and YouTube and online. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So, Madam Mayor, members of council, both here in chamber and online, and as well as the citizens who are either here or watching online, thank you very much for having us this evening. Um, I'm Margaret Schmidt, my colleague Jen Bovar, and we are from the Berkeley Group. Uh, the Berkeley Group is a, a group from here in Virginia that provides services to local governments 
in a wide variety of ways. Uh, we they provide planning services, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, all kinds of different local administration. We're here tonight for executive recruitment, which is a big part of what we do. Um, the advantage is we believe to having the Berkeley Group help you is that we understand local government. And when you hear Ted introduce himself, you'll see the depth of experience that we have. Uh, and you have our whole team behind us, uh, behind this particular project. Uh, I have, um, I retired about three years ago as the HR director in the city of Lynchburg, joined the Berkeley Group not long after, and have been doing a variety of HR support services, as well as executive recruitment all across the state. So I'd like Ted to also introduce himself. I think you're going to have to slide this way, Ted. Oh, yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Ted Polar. Uh, my background is simply a 20 years in municipal government, uh, 17 of those as a city manager, worked in Florida, Virginia, for the most part, Virginia, Kentucky, Illinois, Connecticut. Um, for the last 23 years of my career, I worked at the University of Virginia. Of Virginia Wilden Cooper Center as a resource person with the Virginia Institute of Government as their associate director. So uh, I was a go to person for localities around the state, including Columbia Beach, many conversations with your staff here. So um, look forward to working with you, uh, and uh, I think we can really help you locate the right person to take over the town of Virginia. So as, it, as Ted and I are saying that we bring the experience and the relationships in local government, we have a network of people that we have worked with, that we uh, know, that we both encourage to apply and then have the insight to perhaps vet them in the right way, understanding the job. As I understand, as I mentioned, we have a whole team that's behind us while Ted and I are the advanced group. Should we need any other assistance or any input from the rest of our team, everyone's all on board to help Colonial Beach move forward, as Ted said, find you right next town manager. So tonight is really all about, and I do appreciate Mayor listening to your meeting because we're sort of making notes. Well, there's kind of a challenge. There's a a thing that they're probably going to talk with us about. So it's about uh, learning about you so that we can help candidates know about you. We present the best side of Colonial Beach. So to the candidates that want to come here and help you lead your uh, progress. So we're, what we're going to do is just briefly, you have, on, it's my understanding that you've gotten some documents from us already, some guidance, some broad guidance as well as a series of questions that we want to just facilitate and talk through because our next step then will be to develop a recruitment profile that we will advertise very widely in um, local government kinds of circles where the kind of people that you're looking for are looking for jobs so um, and then from that profile we will accept applications and be able to move forward so it's a uh, we want to emphasize to you, and probably the most important thing for you to remember from tonight, while we are here to help you manage this process, it's your process. It's one of the most important things that you're going to do as a council is to select your next town manager. And while we will help you facilitate it, it is your process. We want to make sure that you get what you want and need out of our systems. Um, <clears throat> We're hoping that you will be aware that candidates are both interviewing you while you're considering them. So consensus uh, around the selection will always be a great thing. But just remember that as you're evaluating candidates, the best candidates are watching their meetings. They are learning about the town. And so um, we want to also see consensus on the needs that you have so that people know what the needs are. Um, as you already know, a change at the top can be really stressful for your employees. So just to sort of keep them in the loop is always a good idea. 
as we work through this process, confidentiality is going to be a critical consideration. It's very likely that people that are already employed will be applying for your job here. So we will maintain confidentiality for them as long as we can. There's certainly a part in the process where it becomes public, but initially we want to maintain that confidentiality. We've already talked with the mayor. It's our understanding that she's going to be our point of contact, our primary point of contact with, uh, with the town as we move forward. Uh, I'm going to be the point of contact for the Berkeley group. So for example, the um, applications or resumes will come to me. Uh, any questions that you might have. I might get, you know, get that support in the background, but I hope that you will kind of follow your questions uh, through me. Um, I want to remind you that we will do full background checks, including reference checks, a criminal background check at the appropriate time. And we hope that you will leave that process to us. It's a really tricky set of laws. Let's talk about and prohibit what you can do, what you can't do, what you can outsource, what you can't outsource. So we have a lot of experience in this area. We work with a licensed investigator. So we hope that you leave that Google search, that background, those reference checks to us. We'll bring you everything that we can find. So at the right time, you will have that. But we hope that you'll leave that, that to us. Uh, as I mentioned, there are general guidelines to bring you through this process. I want to emphasize again, it's your process and we're here to help you. Anybody have any questions? All right, now here's the part where we find out if you really did your homework. <laughs> so we really would like to just uh, engage in a conversation around these questions. Uh, and then we might have a few others that we will talk about. So um, it's going to be a conversation with all of us. Absolutely. Yes. That's my hope. Right. That's right. certainly our hope. I'm going to be very encouraging that my fellow council members engage in conversations with the group, including Karen. You'll have to probably wave your hand, Karen, since you're virtual. Um, yes. Is there some? basis for some means by which the public can have input on this process? Uh, absolutely. That, and that is one of the questions that we'll have is that we can talk about that right now if you'd like. Um, uh, we did mention that to the mayor. One of our baseline questions is, is there interest in having your community weigh in in some ways? Uh, and my understanding that you are open to that. At the same time, you don't want to slow down the process. So where we've, we've had, I guess when you look at the situation that COVID presents to us, it makes it a little more difficult to have uh, community meetings, although we have facilitated community meetings in the past. Uh, another way that we've done that is to do a community survey where we can ask the really similar questions, just focus toward a community perspective and um, put that on your website, uh, put a link out if you have, you know, groups. We, we just heard about your economic development group. You have other groups where you can send that link to them. We, it, it wouldn't slow you down. It would be at, during the same time that we would be developing the recruitment profile. Those responses would help you inform your decision, perhaps. Yeah, I brought up that exact point when I talked to them and um, <clears throat> and I think a community survey project like that we would talk about tonight and get input with um, all, everybody before you know, decision on that. But that's been like a very good thing. And we also have um you know uh, we do the best we can, but we have some pretty digital capabilities here in town and getting out a digital survey I think would be very possible. Um, sure. I mean, this we would we would typically develop. Oh, you do it great. Yeah, you do yeah, it. We would we would develop the survey. We would just like ask you to then share the link or link on your website. Wonderful. Um, we and I recently facilitated. I guess it's been a little while. But I recently just uh, facilitated the recruitment process in the city of Lexington, and we did a survey there. We did a community survey as well as some community meetings, but it, it was about an hour and a half ago, so we were able to do that. Uh, but we would uh, bring a survey to you to um, 
put out. We're more than happy to do that. All right. We will, we will put that on the list. Oh, Karen has a question. Yes. Um, similar to talking to um, our residents, our citizens, do you ever, you talked about sometimes transition is hard for our staff. Do you ever actually interview the staff or do surveys with them? Uh, yes, uh, we certainly can. Uh, really, anyone that you want us to engage, we're happy to do that. Again, a survey might be the best way to do that, to gather their input. Uh, there, you could do something special, I mean, something unique for your staff or your business if you wanted to put a slightly different lens. I, I would caution you against having six different surveys floating out there. You might have a survey that anyone could respond to, and then you encourage your staff to respond to that survey. You encourage different groups, but, uh, but I, I would encourage you to get as much information from your constituents, from your staff, from your businesses, wh whoever you'd like to. But again, like I said, I guess I my question is more, do you do that on, is that something you would normally do? And, and one of the reasons behind that is that we have had a lot of turnover in staff and it would be, I think, really important, informative to get their input on maybe what was good and what wasn't so good about previous town managers that we had. Uh, and Karen, just so you know, at the last staff meeting, I participate and did encourage staff to reach out to us with their um, input too, you know, Obviously, we have some staff that have been here for a very long time, and we saw a lot of our service recognition uh, in the beginning of the meeting. And we've, we've worked with some really dedicated people, and we're very happy and lucky. I think in small towns, we really rely on that. So um, I think their input is very valuable. Uh, we certainly could develop some focused questions just for staff that you could, that you could uh, send out more internally than your public um uh, survey to the community some focus questions that you usually want to have that focus around what are the ideal characteristics in a new town manager doesn't do um people can put that in a positive uh, spin by what they're looking for rather than what they didn't like before mm -hmm. so uh we can certainly um help you with that if you like i'm looking at staff to see mm -hmm. if they're Yes, they're interesting. Okay. That's a more question for them, I feel good. All right. So we will do the same thing. We'll propose uh, some questions that you can send to staff and then gather that input. We would, again, do these probably through a survey monkey tool. Perfect. Then that way we get the information back. We can summarize it. People don't have to worry about, you know, the name being cited here, there, or wherever. Um, don't require anyone's name on them, so we can just tell you a, give you a summary of what the input was. Uh, again, if you uh, you can use that kind of input in a couple of different ways. If we do it fairly quickly and you get a quick response, you might use it towards the profile development. More likely, you would be hearing what the input is to inform your decision around which candidate you want to interview and they select. Yeah, I don't want to slow this down, so I think it would be more focused on the decision than the necessity. Yeah, but if I'm looking around, that was really great. All right. So, any other general questions before we get started on your input? Okay. All right, well, tell us. Uh, yeah, I mean, how, whatever format you'd like. If you just like to take turns, if, uh, but uh, tell us what's special. What do you see as special about the town of Colonial Beach that we would then be communicating and telling prospective candidates? Let's go down the line. Is that okay? Sure. I'm okay. trying to think of the most organized way. Um, Mr. Dragon, Mr. Dragon? Sure. I think one of the main things is a very friendly community where people really like care about each other. Uh, I mean, very few communities where people like golf carts and wave all the time. But and somebody described it as a front porch community where it's just, I think that's that warm and welcoming thing. If I were a candidate for town manager, it'd be something, a place I'd be looking for. That, that I had those characteristics. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of a 
And it's really a real town from the standpoint that it has people from every economic group moving together, which I, I think is one of the wonderful things about it, that we're all neighbors and all friendly. And just the broad spectrum of people. Uh, I think it's very unique. Great. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> very simply, uh, unique opportunities with unique issues that can be challenging at times. <laughs> 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 Unique all the way around. <laughs> all right. All right, Vicki. No, this is really hard for me to do. Um, just simply because I've lived here for so long. And so, you know, when we talk about the closeness um, of the community, the fact that um, we have our own school system, we have our own town system. There are many things that we pride ourselves um, in having here that other localities do not. And they present issues as well. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I guess, kind of similar to what some of the other um, others have said. Well, one thing I'd like to note is it is, it is a very Close knit small community. Um, you, you know, you kind of know everything that's going on here, and, and no matter who you are. Uh, and I would say that I mean, this town thrives on its own, uh, on its location. I mean, we have the we have the beach, and uh, that's our big uh, one of our big draws, and um, that is probably to me the biggest thing that is marketed through the town that. That'd be important to know for some. So. The only thing I'm going to add is that um, I mean, this town, as Pat and others have said, it's a, it, it, it was a beach getaway town. It was a place for people to come. Um, but I, I like to say, just in my observation, that's been tempered. I mean, what you also see is a waterman's work ethic in this town. I mean, people roll their sleeves up and and they work hard here too. Um, at the heart of the town, and I've written some stuff down here, is a, is a population that is willing to spend time and energy volunteering uh, to make this place a destination for prospective visitors and, and a happy, healthy, vibrant community for the residents. So, I mean, you have, I've never seen so many volunteers that come together for events than they do in this town. So it, it is a very close knit town to that. And in the in terms of the development, we're, we're on the cusp here with the Dawson development. But I think everybody's excited about economic development, but we still want to retain that northern neck charm uh, that Colonial Beach has been known for. So uh, that's how we temper a little bit of what's special about this town. Karen? Okay. Um, yeah, everybody has made some really good points. Uh, one thing I'd like to add is that, yes, we are a town and we have a dense population, but we're located in a rural area, and that area itself, the historic Northern Neck, is the birthplace of our nation, and it provides endless opportunity for exploration of history and for nature lovers. And so while our town's economy is strongly based on beach tourism, recreational boating, the Northern Neck economy is strongly based in fisheries, farming, forestry, nature, and history-based um, recreation. Um, the other thing that a town manager would probably maybe find unique if they, if they have looked at other small towns, there are many places where you have to beg people to run for office, and we probably have the most competitive elections that you will ever see. Um, lots of people that want to get involved as volunteers, um, serving on boards and commissions, and um, actually serving on town council. Okay, and I was just looking up to find the, um, you know, we're rewriting the, we're updating the comp plan right now, but the vision statement of the new comp plan was a collaborative uh, initiative that with a group of citizens from all walks of life within town. And, and it reads, Colonial Beach is an attractive, historical beach town committed to family, business, the arts, and a healthy lifestyle. 
And I think that line is a good summary of, of it. Um, and that was a collaborative process to come up with that, that simple line. Um, but also just to emphasize the fact we have our local school and we have a lot of risk or pride and how special that is. And um, another point is just to emphasize the, uh, the voting aspect. If you are a voter, you have a vote, you like to go voting, we are the town for you. So um, hopefully that will draw in somebody who, who will appreciate our water grant community. But I think everybody else has to a lot of those things. I mean, the positive so is there anything else that candidates should know about the town and its government? You started to, a couple of comments were around that. Lots of engagement, lots of people volunteering, lots of people wanting to run. That's a, a wonderful problem to have. <laughs> uh, so anything else that, that the prospective candidates might want to know about how you operate? Um, sure, can you read it first? I, I, I wrote through, paragraphs of all this stuff. So I mean, I'm going to read a little bit here, just kind of the thoughts I had. And this is by no means, this doesn't reflect the whole council, it's just mine. And I'm happy if my council members here say, I don't agree with that, that's fine. Um, what I wrote here is the current council, including the new and elected mayor and the three new members are dedicated to moving the town forward in an open and transparent manner. And I think that's important for a town manager to understand that transparency is what we're going for here. We're fiscally responsible and compassionate and understand the needs of the citizens. This council also understands that the staff has finite resources and realizes the strength of a successful town manager brings to the town leadership team. Glen Beach reflects and respects diversity in all areas, age, gender, race, sexual orientation. We are a town of few small businesses uh, with aspirations to grow. And again, while maintaining that door to Nick Charms. And that's what I have been down for that. Others would like to add something? I'd just like to compliment Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Oh, yes, Karen. <clears throat> All right. Um, I have to unmute by hitting buttons on my phone, and it takes me a little longer. I wanted to make sure that the town manager understands that we we are unique in Virginia in that we are a town located inside of a county with a separate government, but our town doesn't provide all of the services. Some of the, I mean, the, our town provides the services, um, and our town taxes go towards town government, snow removal, non-VDOT road system, water, sewer, trash pickup, police department, parks and recs, and an independent school system. However, the county provides our judicial system, our landfill system, our health department system, our social services, and probably many others that I haven't thought of. So as you may have heard earlier, when um, our representative to the, to the County Board of Supervisors, Mr. Trivet spoke, um, we need to have a town manager that is able to work with the um, county administrator in working together um, on some of these issues and the promotion of some things that go on in town. I would also add that as far as the um, perspective of the county government, that uh, we do have four council members and then uh, the new mayor, and that we represent a pretty large swath of generations. And that I'm just happy to look at that. It meant nothing. Um, I'm just saying No, but that I think that perspective of all of those generations is represented here very purposely because I think our town needs to support um, people in all walks of life of those stages. And, and I think that's an important balance in the town. But I also think that we are working really collaboratively. I mean, and I, that tone has been set right from the start and, and it just continued through. And as a mayor, I truly appreciate it because every, every piece of input from each um, person has been very valuable and that the 
um, the collaborative work style is here and it's not a place to fear. It is a place that you're going to be welcome in that um, manner. And I think we're looking forward to, you know, someone that will fit in with that. Um, we also are up and coming in a lot of ways and going to be making some difficult changes and going through some stresses with the town as we grow. Um, and so navigating that with us as a council and with the public is important. And um, I think we're growing pains is probably our biggest challenge um, coming up because we are, are expecting to almost double our growth, growth rate with the developments that we have um, you know, on the plate right now in the next couple of years. So this is a place to put your stamp. So if you are a candidate looking for a place to make an impact, where are you going to come and it's really going to matter what you did? Lonia Beach is a place that you're, it's going to really matter. Um, and I'm looking for a candidate that wants that challenge, that wants to um, take that on and is energetic about it and positive about it and excited about um, you know, a place that's moving and shaking. Okay. I just want to add to, I know everyone's kind of said something about the volunteers in town, but 100% you have to know, I mean, a lot of the stuff that goes on in town is going through volunteers. And I know they have other places, but it is very large here. There's a lot of um, volunteer organizations that you have to be working with continuously because a lot of the things that happen, happen because of our volunteers. I'm definitely hearing you're not looking for a maintenance town manager. <laughs> you're looking for somebody moving. Mover and shaker. All right. So I think you've started to talk about that is what's your near future and your little longer future. So what are your priorities in the next three to five years? I'm telling you to watch a seven and a half hour. So we do, yeah, you know, we kind of wait a little bit. Um, we started a process a couple of years ago where to not let things fall through the cracks and to not be, um, to stay by, I feel like for me, our word, when something comes up throughout the course of the year, that then where does it go? Does it just drop off? What happens to it? Oh, I remember they mentioned that. Now I don't know where it went. So we do a priorities meeting. That takes it a very incredibly long time <laughs> because we bring up all of the things that got mentioned, regardless of where I as mayor or any one council member stands on the issue. Just to see, is it still relevant? Is this still something to pursue? Is this still, um, you know, uh, something to put time and effort into? And that has really, I feel like, been important in accomplishing. And I'm looking at Pat and Vicky because they were here in the last year. We then can form a document at the end of the year that says there are all those things on that list and here are all the things that got done from it. And I feel like that's really going to be helpful to a town manager to that we go through that process and they will know that if they're pursuing these things, they've already kind of been vetted in a way that is at least worth some time and effort, you know? Um, and then certainly not everything on the list gets accomplished because it's a long list. Mm -hmm. I would say too that that the updated version of that list would probably be a good document for, for them to have because so we do we, the we last have like a way when priority on Monday. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay so you just went through this meeting yeah. we do it we do it in january oh, wait, so so the most recent one was monday but the list is prioritized anywhere from things that need to be done right away to things that are in the cip the things that um, have, contract. have contracts or something like that, and then things that are like long term, long term goals. Okay. So it definitely is a document. I mean, I know we haven't given you anything specific, but that is a hundred percent a document to go through. Absolutely, um, if you can perfectly get a copy of that. Yeah, there is no reason for you to rehash it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you know. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, and then the last one, that'll answer number three for us. Yeah. You want to go ahead and write the question? I mean, that, that's what I had on there, but it's in, you know, that, the first thing I wrote was see the priority list. Um, and then, although many of these items in the list are things we'd like to take care of the next year, many will take several years to come to fruition. Um, I do get a sense that the revitalization of our infrastructure supports the upcoming docks and development, ensuring that they can stay on track. We're providing them the infrastructure to continue to build is going to be essential in the next couple, uh, couple of years going forward. And then, um, I mean, as a shout out to our, our public works, the, the stormwater management has got to be prioritized in, in how we uh, go about development. It affects the development across everything in this town. So the stormwater development, I think, is going to be something that's going to hit somebody right here uh, as they're coming into the position. Well, and just to give a heads up on that, we hired a GIS technician for the first time last year. And so we have someone on staff that is creating digital mapping, and, um, and we have new LIDAR data. So we're trying to get the technology capability in place. And then um, also we've been working with RAF, the RAF program, which is Resiliency Adaptation Feasibility Pool, through the uh, the, the tri university uh, groups through the state. Okay. So we are have some steps on this, but this is a major thing that we're you know looking to tackle. I stormwater, water and sewer Im improvements like infiltration, INI issues, road expansion. Um, there are parks and grounds programming, beautification, downtown development, and on Colonial Avenue, uh, business friendly environment, improving citizen communication and working relationships with our citizens, and shoreline protection and resiliency. But that's a brief, and then the, of course, the priority is not Yeah, they're all, they're all in there. Yep. Okay. Is there anything else that just bubbles right to the top for anyone else? Okay, we'll look forward to. So is that going to help us see then the issues, challenges, and opportunities and projects, especially that the next manager is going to be a, a expected to address in the shorter term, in one to two years? Correct. Maybe it would help with that as well. Okay. I mean, the most challenge, one of the most challenging projects is the, I mean, the biggest thing is uh, the dots of developmental stuff coming through <clears throat> and having to work through that because that's a fairly large project that is going to be going through the town for the next several years. Okay. I'm sure any candidate will research dots of development sure. if they're looking into us, but it's a four phase project and phase one begins in the first phase one. So we signed a development agreement contract. In October, September, October, so it starts in April. Okay. And then uh, every six months pulls out the next phase. So um, mm -hmm. we'll be seeing over the course of two years uh, four major developments happen. And then with that, the catalyst also a subdivision development over here. And then I think there will be a third townhouse development as well. So um, that might be more. So um, there are things, you know, it, that excitement and so then we're excited around is growing in interest in other partnerships. And so, um, you know, I, I know we'll see some challenges in that. Oh, Karen. I know, I thought she was late. <laughs> so the other, the other thing is, is that we have, um, a piece of property called the, I think it's called the Lenore property that was supposed to be developed extensively um, before the 2008 recession hit. And, and that is, there is talk, there's chatter about that coming back online. So that could be an, another even bigger development issue to be dealing with and the infrastructure um, and the support that that would need. And that is probably a little bit further, you know, down the line where something might not even start for a couple of years, but it's definitely on the radar. And I think one of the challenges, um, as, as you've heard several people say, we have a lot of 
volunteers, we have a lot of diversity and being able to listen to a diverse and loud group of stakeholders and being able to make their input feel important, even if you don't agree with them, to be able to listen to the people of this town because they really are involved and they really do care. I think I think most of the, the things that we talked about challenges. Um, talk about you know, right now without a town manager, we have an interim town manager who's doing a more than spectacular job, not just holding uh, the finger in the dike, but actually doing moving it forward. And you know, I do appreciate that, Rob. You do a tremendous job. Um, but I think beyond that, and it's kind of a mention that too, is building our relationship with the county. Uh, I think that's going to be important that that person can actually secure that bridge, build it, and reinforce it, and, and really become partnership with the county. Uh, for some reason or another, that, that has been become the point of friction. So I think that's going to be an important uh, role for that town manager to fill, too. Uh can you talk a little bit about your relationship with the school board? How does uh, how does that work? Is that uh, we all look at as Vicky and Pat? So Pat is a teacher, and Vicky is a former teacher. Okay, now you on the school board and on the school board. Does that that help or hurt? <laughs> it's why I came to this town. So um, obviously, it was a positive factor in my life. Um, I'm teaching here and being on the board at the same time. Uh, it goes with anything. I mean, it, some administrations are absolutely wonderful to work with and others are not. And currently, I think we have a very good relationship with the superintendent Excellent. and many of the board members. Okay. Yeah, the school has, gotten, um, has grown a lot. So, uh, I don't know, we had a fire around and people burned down and then, uh, and there was a lot of displacement and then temporary, and that was a very big challenge for the town. And um, I was very proud to see our town pull together and build a brand new elementary school, which is a fabulous facility and has attracted, you know, more students and in really good capacity. So, um, they, they have a lot of positive things going on over there. And I think the growth and investment in that new school was key for the growth of Colonial Beach because if you have a nice school system, it really means a, a lot to your school. Um, I, I do believe that our school is our largest employer. They employ more people in town. Am I am I right on that, Vicky? It, it it goes back and forth between um, Food Lion and the school, doesn't it? Something, but usually the yeah. school that says a lot. Yeah, it's about, good one. But the school, <laughs> the school, <laughs> yeah. Um, the school's really important. Yeah, the school uh, has has been one of the top employers. And I graduated college, so we're very proud. She graduated valedictorian. Wow. Great, along with great representation. With a class of 32 people. No, no, no. It's okay. 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 It's
uh, to help with that is an opportunity. I want to make sure, Mr. Duggan, Mr. Monster, if you. I just want to make sure you guys get a chance to sign it. Okay. Maybe you're sure I'll weigh in. I have something to say. I will. <laughs> 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 Never. Okay. 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 Um, I see a, a lot of opportunities also in grants. We've been growing in grants. Um, we, I think, have gained over a million dollars in the last um, two years of grants, and we want to continue to pursue more grant opportunities. And that's been important. And it's really vital that we do that because I think on our own budget, it would be impossible to accomplish the things that we really need to accomplish. So, uh, people that Experience in grants is important and um, administration of them and uh, close out of them is something that the town has struggled with in the past. And so uh, we feel very big um, importance in, in doing that. Um, so, yeah. Well, we also have to recognize that we are close to Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> very close. <laughs> Which like the Reno may be being reborn with the riverboat with the gambling, but we've also got the widening of the uh, nice bridge to four lanes and the long swimming boat, as well as development coming out from King George. So I think there are a number of elements immediately outside of that that are going to have a dramatic impact on. Um, I would do want to mention you know, that in issues and challenges that um, one of the things I had down to that was that we have had an um, employee turnover. And so it's really important that our employees grow in their job and have job satisfaction and that there is a sense of teamwork and um, support. And that may be a, a challenge, but certainly one. I was actually going to suggest that as an opportunity. I think there's a great opportunity for somebody that's a good team builder to build a strong team of dedicated town staff and empower them to reach their full potential right here in town. We've had a fair amount of turnover, not only in town managers, but other key staff positions. And then I guess kind of a question to you all is what kind of challenges that presents you in front of the group? You follow me on that. In other words, it, it, how much how much is stability in that a factor in terms of who you attract for this position? Well, I mean, my perspective from uh, human resources is that it's a two-edged sword. You have somebody new that comes in that has the ability to build their team, and so you know you can. That's that's a great opportunity for someone to be to have some vacancies to look at. Everything from structure to who's who's there already, what's the right roles. I see it as much as an opportunity for somebody uh, as anything else. But of course, there are some critical roles that that you always want to have in place to bring that 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 organizational knowledge, that institutional history, that can you know so they can share that and and it helps reduce a new manager's learning curve. So a, a balance is all is, is great, but I don't think it's a huge detraction when somebody knows they can come in and have a lot of influence, if not control over who's on the team. Okay. Yeah, uh, there are communities in Virginia that have a reputation of rolling managers in and out. And it takes a while to develop that reputation and it takes a long time to get rid of it. Colonial Beach doesn't have that reputation as far as I'm concerned. Now, we have, I will say, the turnover, just to be clear, has been um, largely in public works in the police department. Mm -hmm. And so, and there were have had new recruits in the police department and new recruits in public works. And we do have a lot of dedicated staff also in those departments, though, that have been here a very long time. Yeah. So it's a mix. 
a little bit. The, the police department issue in any small town is, you know, so many of them are basically nurseries or larger departments. Right. So, you know, and it's very frustrating. I was down there in the dining house, I've been there in for 13 years, and hanging on to your good police officers is a constant challenge. Uh, wow. Some want to be state police. There's nothing you can do about that. If they want to be state, they, they have a different, that's a different career uh, than being a town, city, or county, uh, or county deputy. Uh, uh, town mm -hmm. city police officers. Um, in, in focusing on the manager's position, uh, managers look at what happened in each case. Um, they're, you know, they don't go in and just say that's a bad place to be a manager because they have turnover. Um, you have to look at the whole pattern over 20 years or more. Uh, you also look at, you know, what, who was succeeding who? You know, was it a internal promotion? Was it a, uh, a, a bad decision? You know, was, was it a bad decision made? And, you know, it was obvious. So it was a short tenure for that person. Um, again, I, I don't have any indication that you will not, you know, you would have any difficulty in that area. Yeah, we may be sensitive to it more so than it really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're not on the bad list. <laughs> Mr. What, what kind of tenure would a town manager come here and expect in terms of years? My personal recommendation to people is because there, there are managers that like small communities. <clears throat> You know, they do not have a objective of just working the ladder, you know, and, and becoming city manager of, of Norfolk. You know, that, that's not the kind of person I don't think is going to be interested in this job unless they're very wet behind the ears. And you can usually sniff that out pretty quickly if they're looking for just a stepping stone. Um, I tell people that I counsel in the profession, um, you take a job, you commit to the job, and don't listen to anyone other than yourself in terms of, is it working for the town? Is it working for you? Are you happy? Do you feel productive? And as long as you do, stay. You know, once it's not working, then, you know, or you, you know, you're getting bored or uh, it's not a challenge anymore. You don't look forward to going to the office. Then you need to move on. But don't set artificial parameters. You know, there, there used to be in the profession that every manager should move on every seven years because you become stale. I don't, I never bought it 30 years ago, 40 years ago. When I started the profession, I don't buy it today. There are extraordinary examples of 30 year tenures in the state of extraordinary service and highly productive communities as a result of it. So, yes, it, I mean, your expectation to be realistic, a five year run is a good run. You know, it, it, you can't expect a lifetime commitment, but you may. You may find that wonderful symbiotic relationship that works for the individual and works for the town and you're you know extraordinarily fortunate. Those are not trumped, but I, I would think you know there's a rule that in ICMA, the, the International City Management or City County Management Association, two years minimum. Otherwise you're looking at an ethics violation. Okay, so you commit for two years minimum. To be productive, to really make a difference, like you're talking about, of, of this is a place where you could make a mark and there's a lot of good stuff going on to really make a difference. That's what managers, good managers are looking for. It, and, and I would expect, you know, easy, you know, I would 
expect a five year term because you just can't make that big a difference in a two to three year period. It's just almost impossible. So I think that's realistic, and I think that's something you need to express to the candidates that that's your expectation on it. You want you really want to develop a team and just do that, make that team work. You need the, you know the person to go in with the idea of at least you know a, a five year commitment. Mm -hmm. And that will segregate out some people that are not look, looking at this as aesthetic stuff as opposed to, you know, this is a position I want. I want. I would echo that I think we need five years and because of the development projects that's yeah. coming in and the stages and stuff that's going to go through, it would be, you know, difficult in the middle of that to um, have somebody who was expecting this to be shorter, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, that's why like, that's, that's important to make note. One of the things that I don't think anybody's mentioned yet is that we, and this is this is kind of I don't know if it's a pipe dream or if it's just an idea down the road, but we, you know, we are on the cusp of the possibility of being an independent city, um, and and it's not anything that we're ready for now, but that's something that is is kind of like way out there on the horizon where we could be independent of the county. It would take a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of leadership, but it's just something that I wanted to throw out there because there has been talk about it for the past couple of years. Yeah. I think with, with our own school system, we're about 80% of the way there in this population. We need, we need a population and reasonable population. The, uh, the big big part of that is the school system we already have that. Right. Okay, that's certainly something to know. And just on, on the other topic, just to give you a little confidence, we a part of our process is we do preliminary interviews and we really do um, probe into that. Where does this job fit into the arc of your career? What are you looking for? What you know? What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in? five, 10 years, that kind of thing. So that is a issue that we do talk quite a bit with the candidates that, that as we're talking with. Um, so someone mentioned, I think the mayor mentioned or others mentioned your comp plan. And uh, we've seen that online that you still have a draft. Is uh, What's your timeline on completing that draft? And if you still, you have sessions set and, and is the, is that draft still very consistent with council's thinking? Do you expect much change in that as it becomes final? So I want Mike to speak first because he is our liaison to the planning uh, okay. commission and also was served on the planning commission. I just came from the planning commission. So, so what I wanted to highlight is that the, the comprehensive plan is truly a reflection of the citizens' desires. Um, and then as well as observations and experiences of the planning commission and, and the staff members that put it together. Um, the current draft that we talked about has just undergone review by, by RAP and the Northern Planning Commission. There's some changes, some adjustments we have to make to reflect the environment we live in. Um, and I would say that that plan is still a, a living, breathing document. And so, but I, I have not seen anything in there, nor have I heard anything that would give us a sense that the new council coming in is just going to take it and rip it to shreds and say start over again because. Again, it's reflected by the citizens that are out there. There's many um, surveys that have gone out and focus group sessions with citizens that put a lot of what's in there that are goals and objectives in that plan. So I don't I don't foresee a reason we would say there's a, a wholesale overthrow of the comprehensive plan. It's you know, we are ready to hold our public hearings on it and and then continue to move forward and fine tune it, whatever we need to do. But um, I believe there's support for what we have right now. Right. So is this a revision or was it a so, total rewrite? That's what I was going to comment. So it's a total rewrite. Um, I will say though, because I served on the planning commission for nine years before Mike did, and then, and at that point in time, we were realizing the comp plan from 2009, which is what currently we have in, obviously needed to be rewritten because 
several pretty major things that happened in history. Um, the elementary school had burned down. The development that uh, Karen had talked about, the Lennar development, did not happen and not in that plan. And then this new Dobson development is has actual you know foundations to go forward. And so all, those are pretty big things that we're missing out of. I will say though that a lot of the key elements from the 2009 plan were still echoed in citizen concerns for the new plan. So even though it's outdated, the 2009 one, there is still a lot of information in that that is relevant and still needs to be done. I mean, there are things that were identified 11 years ago that are still on our priorities list that we're still trying trying to get done. So if anything, the comp plan that they're been working on now um, may just still need some filler, you know, and it would produce and buy the money. We didn't use a firm, right? <laughs> Good. Yeah. It's a lot of work to do that. It is. I would say not perfect because a firm would have known all of the exact, you know, format and verbiage, but it's our own. It came from us. And in that sense, it's very important. So, uh, that. A good summary of the history of the mm -hmm. plan. Great. Yeah. And that's a document that we that we use regularly to pull information about the community to put into the recruitment profile. So sure. it's yeah. so really reflective and it's good to know that it's reflective of the citizens. So let's start talking a little bit about now your ideal candidate, your person <laughs> that you kind of consider hiring. What kinds of um, specific qualifications? Are you looking for that? Okay. I was just going to ask Mike how long before those revisions are going to be published because I would I would hesitate in putting that draft out there to candidates because I think we're 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 really close to having all that input from the Northern Net Planning Commission and RAFT incorporated. They, they received the Northern Planning Commission feedback just kind of in the last couple of days, right? That lane, the detailed uh, feedback from them. So again, the intent was to the planning commission is meeting tomorrow to review what has come in to get a sense for how long it's going to take to make some of the changes or at least reference uh, other larger comprehensive plans from the northern neck of the region. You know, we just at least have to make reference to them in our plan. So it's not significant work, but it, it, it could take a, a week or two weeks to get it to where we want it out for public uh, for the public hearing. And then whatever input comes in there, I mean, then it comes to the council, the council reviews it, they can send it back or they can say it's good as it is and then hold another public hearing. So we're, we're talking about several months or probably a couple months until you have something that is approved by the council. Yeah, I would encourage candidates to look at the new one and to look at the 2009 yeah. one. The draft one was put out for a reason. It was put yeah. out publicly so that you can look at So I, I, think it says, I don't think that would be bad at all to have the draft look at it. It's, it's the direction we're heading. It's not going to be a significant turn for that. And I believe the draft is on your website right yeah. now. It is. It is. So it's good. And I think that's representative of the transparency that you've been talking about. Yeah. Is that it's it's there. So what do we think around education? Are you expecting um, an advanced degree? Uh, do you think a bachelor's degree? What, what are your thoughts around formal education? Yeah, Kyle had some experience. He was the mayor of Warrington. Oh, OK. Um, well, a couple of administration, maybe a degree in math, I think it's planning. This type of politics. Bachelor's, master, bachelor's, master's I preferred. I mean, I think it. I think it depends on the candidate. Okay. I think you know somebody who has been exposed to that. But, but this, you, you don't see it as a hard line. A master's is required. So just that educated bachelor's or master's could um, improve somebody's standing based on. What it is, what they've done with it. Right. Combination of education and experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know about 
so interested in a degree uh, without by itself or right. or, or a okay. So how much experience? What what seems like the right amount of experience and what kind of experience do you think needs to be combined with that education? I'd like I'd like to see at least three years at the minimum, but I really would prefer experience over the education. In right. my that's my I um I mean I, a degree in community planning or administration is right in line. Um, but I think we have some major things to tackle and I'd like somebody who's done that before who understands what that means. Um, you know, grant through and development. So, are you looking for someone who's been a manager before? Well, yeah, uh, go ahead. I'll make a joke about somebody being old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 obviously, a combination of terms. Sure. One, one thing by itself, I don't think, makes a big difference. For, but if you've got a combination of factors that add up to somebody, Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think it necessarily has to be experienced as a manager. I've seen a lot of candidates who weren't managers before who did other things in government that would do well for their ability to, to be a manager. Okay. So, uh, assistance, deputy, some local government experience? Yeah. yeah. Virginia experience? Yeah. That would be a plus. Because of the bill in State. True. Yeah. Right, Bill? So I think I wrote down here a master's in a public administration would be desired, but a bachelor's in a re related field is probably required. Um, and then going on the experience, at least three to five years in positions related to town and city policy, execution, or development. Not looking for someone who's just starting their, their life in municipal service right now, uh, but would prefer a candidate that's led and directed or been. In charge of staff with functional functions related to HR, finance, uh, IT, possibly a working knowledge of public works. Um, and that, I think all those things would be things that we would look for in the experience level of that individual. I want some IT on the third side. I would like to see someone with an IT major. A credential manager? Okay. But that's not necessarily required. Oh, for sure. That would be highly desired. Uh, that's a significant process to get that credentialing and usually requires at least if not being a manager deputy right and kind of with that credential comes with all of these other points of i mean you know been a manager i mean good um skill sets that are built right. with that yeah. Other kind, other any other? Are there any particular other affiliations, groups, other certifications, other kinds of things that would appeal to you would make a stronger candidate? Like just uh, somebody who has a history of being connected, like BML, for example, who has friends who are managers, has a resource to grow upon, a network, yeah. a network. Yeah. Yeah, I get the impression we're not so concerned about acronyms after somebody's name right. as we are the substance of what they're what they're right. called. Certainly I'm hearing quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it's to be 10 years of experience, if it's not the right kind of stuff, that it's some sort of fancy of them. Okay. I think also we're uh, our downtown Plano Beach is a seasoning group for our Main Street program, mm -hmm. and over the next you know three to five years, that um, that's a major goal. It has been a goal, and if we can all get on board and, and do that, but um, so somebody who has experience in a Main Street program or has been a uh, town manager somewhere or in administration, and that would be very helpful. Okay. Um, because with that comes with a lot of those connections they are coming around right. to and an understanding of business incentives and economic development and what that means and also the small town feel that charm and quality of small town. Okay. Talk about leadership. 
leadership style a little bit. You, you've referred to that already. You want a team builder, somebody who's going to develop staff. Uh, what other kinds of leadership are you looking for? No. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll read the blurb here. Um, looking for a leader who is confident, willing to map out the way and set expectations for the staff while engaging and energizing the followers along the way. So somebody who's really ready to give direction, but also is willing to listen to their people. Um, the manager must also be willing to ask the staff and others for opinions and be willing to listen in a democratic manner. We don't need an authoritative person in it. Yes, Tom. Going to be close to that, but I would say somebody that sets standards for performance in accord with council directives, and then holds staff responsible for accomplishing the mission. Oh, yeah. Oh, Karen. Yes. Yeah. I think I'm saying pretty much the same thing, but my key words were empower and delegate, that the manager judges himself by how well his staff does or her staff does. In other words, if your, sta if, if your staff is performing well, then you're doing your job well, rather than a manager that wants personal credit for everything him or herself. Yes. Oh, and some of this has been said, but I think a key attribute is a good communication skills and being inclusive, and not just with staff, but with the community and being available to the community um, for any concerns, being available to, to the mayor and council. Um, someone who recognizes that he or she represents the whole council, not just one council member or, or the mayor. If we speak as a group, and this is sort of a negative thing, but someone who doesn't involve him or herself in council politics, you know, keeping that separate and you know, pitching one against the other. I think we're very fortunate. The mayor said it's a very collaborative group that we have. With diverse opinions, but still collaborative. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what you want. Right. It is. Um, I have friendly. Okay. I know that seems like a simple thing, but um, it is a customer service industry. And I, our community is a friendly place. We ride on golf carts. I, we didn't mention that in the beginning, and we should. We drive golf carts and we love it. <laughs> and we decorate our golf carts and we have lights and, and radios and it's awesome. So, um, in the position of in a golf cart, you're slower, you slow down the pace of your life, and you are very visible, right? You're open and in the public. And so, waiting is key. And I would I'd like to see somebody that way. So, okay. Um, I know that seems like a simple thing, but I think in our community, a, a friendly person would go a long way. I don't know where you put that requirement. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great exercise, though. Again, I was sure she would wait. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've, always, I've, I've always thought that in small communities, not necessarily golf cart communities, but there should be a public notice when somebody sells their car because you end up waving to the car and it's no longer <laughs> <laughs> like you have to people then go, Well, I got a new car, you don't wait for me. Yeah. And you know, when that's why I wait at every time. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would that's recommend like some kind of world public board or something changes hands. They understand who has what <laughs> right. That's always a problem in small towns. Um, but I mean, I think what that really goes into is also working well with these public groups, these volunteer groups that we have, and, and all of that. Um, strategic planning is a must. We have a lot of uh, needs with these developments in, in our public work system. Um, we need a strategic planner, uh, somebody with some community planning and vision. And, 
Yeah. Well, I just have a question. We have a lot of stuff that we've said. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we have a lot of qualifications that we've set out there. Do you think it's possible to find somebody? Yes. That's, yes. You know, it's. I, we appreciate your input, uh, but ninety percent of it, we could have told you what you were going to say. Because you know, nobody, nobody's going to say, "Well, I want a slacker coming in and helping us." So, yeah, this is this is what the profession presents, and I think that you absolutely have a very high chance. And in fact, we've kind of already put the word out a little bit and have people who have already expressed interest in this opportunity. So, who we think are good candidates. So, not many of them right now, but yes, we we think that what you've described is what what the profession offers to you. So I think, yeah, especially when you look at something like ICMA membership, DML membership, uh, that kind of network, that's a very supportive network in Virginia. And that, um, that yes, I, I think it's very, very doable. Any other, uh, we will of course add, and unless you object, the ethics, the highest integrity, those kinds of things and the characteristics. Any other kind of characteristics that you think are important? No, I just, you know, must understand that the town staff is this in focus. They they're there to support the citizens. Um, must be willing to own the problems and the issues, even if it doesn't seem like it's directly in their lane. They they've got to own the things that come into the town hall, and they must be willing to listen to the citizens when decisions are not favorable to some. Uh, and be able to communicate why decisions are made in some time. And then transparent in all communications and willing to address the town as the town manager. Pat, do you have anything I don't mean to? No. And agreeing. I, I had just two more things to okay. touch on uh, quickly. One is the understanding of uh, both rural and urban attitudes. A kind of unique thing, I think. And if you are uh, in Colonial Beach, we're on tiki time. So, in that respect, we kind of have a rural attitude. It's a slowed down a little bit. But in the other respect, we have density and needs and some, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a lot of demands of an urban atmosphere, too. And so, that's, I think it's a little bit different. Um, and I guess maybe most towns have that issue, but since we have a lot of people that come from Washington, D.C. and come from Richmond here, they have that expectation of a more urban place, but then you get to the northern neck and we're like, okay, we're, you know, get on your golf cart, right? <laughs> get on the golf cart. But, um, and the other is capable, and I hate to say this because this is a challenge, but, um, you know, capable of handling natural disasters. We have, uh, we have a history of hurricane season hitting us once every so often or other things like that. And it's um, likely in the five year, 10 year that something like that would have to be. Yeah, I think we got one point after 11 since three of them hit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hopefully, you know, none ever, right? But uh, I think we need to be realistic about the okay. Okay. challenge that we have. Oh, which does bring up uh, one question. Does the town manager hold other positions like the coordinator uh, or director of coordinator of emergency management? So that is uh, both the mayor and the town manager. I think the mayor is the director, director and the town manager is the the coordinator. Okay. Yeah, that's the way it currently is. Okay. Are, I mean, and there are, are there other roles that the manager plays? You obviously have clerk, so they're not tasked with the clerk, which is could be other uh, purchasing agent. Um, uh, on regional, local, or regional boards. Uh, this is a small town, maybe every. Okay. <laughs> Would you expect the manager to live in town? Preferred. I would say it's a preference. I know. Um, yeah, so I would say some of our council members feel very strongly about that. I, I don't know how the whole council feels. Does Mrs. Charter say anything about that? 
I, I didn't see anything in your charter that said residency was required. Yeah, it was, uh, pretty much a month. Um, but it is a month. I think it's a high, in my opinion, it's a high preference. Yeah, yeah, because you can only have a golf cart if you live in a So, come out and me, the golf cart. Yeah, that's the real preference. They need a golf cart. Yeah, okay. Well, the golf cart for sure. Oh, sure, for sure. Both also prefer. You should bring your own, but we're not going to. You're not going to You don't provide a golf cart for that? I don't know. Did we used to have a golf cart? The police, the public works has some. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Was that real? Is that realistic? I think I think so. I think you may have to go to the 121, 25, but I think that that range is realistic. Sort of Absolutely. I think you're I think you're in the right ballpark. Absolutely. Uh, and then I'm assuming full benefits. Do you participate in BRS? Always a draw. Right. And council would enter into an employment agreement with the successful candidate. You negotiate that. Yeah. Right. So talk about engagement. Um, we offer um, some assessments if you if it's something that council would like to consider things like uh, we work with some some groups that provide EQ assessments emotional uh, quotient or we have a program called advanced insights that put together some assessments that help identify uh, what someone's style is what their decision making is and so that's something you just might want to consider, and it's not, not a decision that you need to make tonight, but um, you, there, there might be some additional assessments that you might want to consider when you get down to some finalists. Sure. Wouldn't that be teased out for resumes and interviews? It, it often is. It often is, yes. As some communities like, uh, like to have some sort of a uh, more of an objective, mm -hmm validated kind of assessment of that. And so we, we just, we offer that if it's something that you like, or you find that, well, we just want to sort of test this person out. It's not a qualifier disqualifier. It's a way to get additional data points about your top candidates. So we can send some information to the mayor. It's just something that- Yeah, I think we had talked it through about that. Okay. And, um, that I think we're looking more at the interview process and also your own um, vetting right. process where you know relying on all of that. Um, I know a couple of managers have taken this test and they always just feel terrified afterwards. <laughs> okay. um, so I think of, of the personality matters a lot. Yes. Yeah. Just a question on the contract. I mean, what do candidates usually look for now? As far as if, if there's a severance or the compensation. Yeah, I mean, a severance is normally, it, it is a negotiated part of the agreement. Um, our experience is a severance usually starts with three months if uh, if council decides just to part ways. So it's a, a you know, no cause kind of thing. It's obviously if there's a, a separation for cause, then there is no severance. But, but they range from three to six months depending upon your comfort level. What we're seeing more recently, what I've seen more recently is, is a um, kind of an increasing increment. So a manager may start with a three month severance and then for every year that they work, they add a month of severance up to no more than six. So um, that's, if that is a negotiated factor, but they normally start at three months severance. I guess it's our prior um, uh, agreement. And then because I think there's some things to be edited in that. And uh, also the legal, so that we can work on that now in the meantime. Uh, we use the IC Mates template as the, as the primary. Oh, okay, great. Well, I, I can send you that. I can yeah. send you the IC Mates template. Yeah, let's compare to or if if you want us to. Uh, yeah, when we would normally actually help you write that. Yeah, you do everything. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't actually want to do anything. Okay. All right. Um, uh, one sort of last question that I have I don't know if you were expecting uh, applications or resumes from internal candidates or local people, but what's your guidance for how we might treat those applications in the case where the person is not qualified? <clears throat> Are you asking for our guidance? Yeah. That? So, like, what's your, because it's usually a situation where there, it might be, just as an example, uh, a prominent community member decides they could be town manager <laughs> and they apply, they don't really have the qualifications you've identified. It's kind of around that um, courtesy interview. Think about that. 
It's not our position that we recommend courtesy interviews, but yeah. we just kind of want to know what your thoughts are if somebody. Um, yeah, the body yeah, language yeah. I'm seeing is if they're not qualified, you don't want them to see them anymore. Well, this is just part of the reason why we're hiring you to take that on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would follow this. This is the whole point that we okay. chose to do the firm. Absolutely. And that's that is our we, we willingly take that responsibility. Um, we just want you to be aware that that may be that might turn up, and so we want the confidence that you've given us to say, you know, if you don't meet the quality, then we will tactfully tell someone that that they're not being referred. <laughs> All right, I'm seeing head nods. I think that's okay, good. I mean, that, again, I want to reiterate: this is your process, and we're going to do everything we can to make it easy for you and to facilitate all the way through. But it is your process. So, um, okay. I want to just talk a little bit about a timetable. Well, let me, before I do that, anything else anybody wants to add? Anything we missed? Any gaps you want to fill in? Anything else we should know? Maybe something we didn't ask. I don't think so. Okay. Um, so, just a, a very tentative timetable. Obviously, we're meeting with you tonight. We will take all of this information along with what we've agreed to share, uh, and we will draft a recruitment profile uh, for your review. I'm assuming you would want to see that before we advertise it. Um, we, we should have that finished right around the beginning of February. We should have a draft for you to look at. Um, once you agree that it's what you want to say, then uh, we will advertise that and we have found that it takes about 30 days for a position to be advertised to get the kind of pool, the quality pool and the numbers that you want to see. So we would have that advertised in a wide variety of places. Uh, local, uh, we, we would ask that you put that profile on your website so that, and we will also put it on Berkeley's website so people can link to that We'll advertise it with ICMA and DML and VACO and um, just all of those normal professional organizations uh, and and other organizations that are relevant. We think that in your in your location, that we should we'll advertise in the Maryland um, Managers Associations as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then we would have an initial cutoff for candidate review. Uh, around the beginning of March, um, we can brief you periodically as to the numbers and how it's going, that kind of thing along in there. Uh, then our first step is to start to vet the candidates. We do a basic internet search at that point. We identify the top candidates for a preliminary interview. And with the current situation, we've been doing those by Zoom. We used to do telephones, but now we're doing Zoom, which is really great, much better actually. Uh, so by late March, we would like to meet with you again to review the process and to go through the groups of candidates that we've already uh, talked to. What we normally do is we put the candidates in like a top, middle, and bottom group, talk them through with you, and then you would identify who you're going to actually interview from that group. I hope that that will be no more than five or six people. Um, so that leads us to sometime late March, early April, when you would be doing those interviews. We need we will need to set aside probably a whole day for that. So you need to start thinking about your calendars in that time frame. Uh, and then if after those, those rounds of interviews, we will talk in the future about what else you might want to include in that. Some communities like to do a tour as associated with that. We've had community, um, councils that like maybe they have the candidates meet not just with council, but maybe a short meeting with staff, so kind of a two-stage interviews. You'll have a lot of flexibility there that we can flesh out as we get to that point. Um, but we would try to do that all in one day. That, that would should be late March, early April. If after those interviews you you have your top choice and you're ready to make an offer, then we'll facilitate that, start the agreement. If you decide you want second round interviews, you know, it's um, sometimes you just have to see what the pool looks like before you can make those final decisions. But 
that's kind of generally we would hope that by very early April you would have um, an approved agreement. Uh, someone might have to give notice and that kind of thing. But we, that our timeline is between now and early April to uh, to have a contract ne negotiation going on. Sound reasonable? Yeah. Hopefully, because <laughs> that's sort of what it seems. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you decide, and you again, you don't have to decide this right now, but if you decide to bring candidates in, will council pay their travel expenses come for interview? Yes. 